Ricky. Keith. The reason we're all here. The reason today. we're here today is uh, we started making a soul record. So people that are watching this probably don't know a lot of the backstory because mm -hmm. you and I aren't exactly on social media blowing sure. that kind of stuff up. Sure. But we met um, probably about a, a year ago. Almost a year ago, yeah. Um, I had lunch with you and Mr. Robbie Crane. That's right. Robert Crane at Barney's Beanery, and this yep. is not a plug because I don't yep. work for them. Yep. Um, but we had lunch, oh, and <laughs> and you guys so graciously, uh, you, you told me that Damon was leaving. Yeah. Black Star. Yeah. And um, we wanted you to join, and you dissed us. <sighs> No, go on. I love Black Star Riders. And I want to tell you a little story. And I never told you this before, all the hours that we've spent together. But I'll tell you the story about when I first heard you singing for Thin Lizzy. And I was like, that's fucking cool, man. Thank you. You know, I, I loved you. it. Um, Thank you. Um, I had to politely decline that offer. And I, I love your band. And I love the legacy and the music. And, mm -hmm. I, and um, it made me go deeper on you as a solo artist sure. and just find out more you. about you. Um, because a lot of that stuff didn't hit my radar. But, um, man, um, that segued into you and I writing some songs together. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, like you said, that's where we met, and obviously we got on very well, and, you know, the timing wasn't right for you. You didn't want to go back out on the road. Obviously, Black Star Writers tour a lot, and you'd just been through all that with, yeah. with Buck Cherry. And we got that, and, you know, it, obviously it worked out for the best. It worked out great all around, because we ended up getting Christy Martucci, who, who's he was, phenomenal. And, yeah, he's great. You know, the band's as stronger than it ever was, and you and I ended up, hitting it off, same taste in music and rock and roll and guitars, and you suggested that we get together and just write some songs and see what happens. Right. Um, and when I suggested that, I had no idea that you actually had a solo deal, so I didn't really know no. that that's yeah. where we were going to go yep. with that. So you said come over to the studio, your studio, and we did. Um, we started working on, I think the first song was Fighting Heart. Fighting Heart. Fighting Heart. We started working on that. And it was fun, and we had a good laugh, and it went really well. And I think you know we started finding out more about each other. And and I told you about I want to do a solo record, and you're like, "Have you got a producer?" And I said, "Well, not not yet." You know? <laughs> and you're like, "Well, funnily enough, well, huh, I'm looking at my schedule." <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love that it happened organically like that, and yeah. and that we really connected. It's one of the things that um, is not lost on me through this whole process is that we're about the same age. And we mm -hmm. both came up in rock and roll, and we kind of end up at almost the same spot, but we came from such different angles, you know? Sure. Um, your background of, uh, you know, just being across the pond and um, yeah, punk, punk yeah, rock. Yeah, and, and we're both blue-collar, working-class, you know, boys. We grew up, you know, working-class families in, in fairly tough areas. And, yeah. you know, I think that's obviously... Your culture is part of who you are and what you are um, throughout your life, and, and musically, I think that's, you know, we've got a great work ethic, yeah, and and that's important for both of us. Um, and you know, something feels right; it just feels right, and we're it's always very comfortable hanging out. And uh, you know, we both agree the most important thing is the songs. And uh, dude, it was just easy working with you. It was fun, you know. Oh, thanks. You know? I really had a blast. You know, <laughs> I think all of the songs that we've written, even though some of them are fast. Uh, there's guitar riffs and the band's bashing away. You can take each of those songs back to the way you and I wrote them, which was sitting on a couch. The acoustic guitars. The acoustic guitars. Stripped down. And they, and they, the weight of those songs still, still comes across. Yeah. I mean, I, I wanted to make a real, uh, sort of too cliche, like a real rock and roll album. You know, stripped down. I, you know, the, the last record I did when Patsy Cline was crazy. The double album was phenomenal. It was a lot of work doing a double album. Obviously, you, you know, the one, one was acoustic, one, yeah. one was electric. And, and writing that with, with, with my, my good buddy Sam Robinson was an amazing experience, both being from Belfast and writing about growing up there and our situations and people that we knew. And even harking back to my third solo record, Belfast Confetti, was all about growing up in Northern Ireland. So I've, I've done that. Yeah. Yeah, people are like, all right, we get it, Ricky. You're from, you're from Belfast and Northern yeah, Ireland. Yeah. We know. That, that's great. Um, so with this record, I wanted to, to, to I don't, not simplify things, but just broaden the, the, the horizon a little bit and, and, and and get out there more and sing about stuff maybe that I haven't sang about before. And musically, I just want it to be raw and, and, yeah. and more in your face. Um, and I think, I think we've achieved that. No one had to worry when life was at its best. 